guys, it's Shadow the Rat, and for today's video, I wanted to talk some about dwarf rats. And as some of you might know, I currently have four dwarf rats, and these girls here are actually two of the dwarf rats in question, and both of them are full grown. Um, Butter here is about a year and two months, and French Fry here is nearly 23 months. Uh, she's currently 22 months. So as you can see, very, very tiny. Uh, that's just kind of how dwarf rats are. They typically max around the size of a five to six week old standard rat. So usually somewhere around 100 to 150 grams. Although if they get chunky, like unfortunately one of my dwarfs is, uh, then they can be more than that. And <laughs> let me see if I can get my chunky uh, dwarf girl over here. Come on, Tater Tot. So yeah, this is Tater Tot. And she is the chunky dwarf in question. As you can see, she is a... Uh, quite sizable for a dwarf. So as far as dwarf characteristics go, there really aren't too many differences between them and standard rats. The ways that they differ from standard rats are mainly in size and health. So size-wise, like I said, they max typically around the size of a five to six week old standard rat, and they don't typically grow any more than that, unless they get a little bit chunky in old age, like someone here. But otherwise, they tend to stay very small, and the type of dwarfism you find in these rats uh, is a recessive trait, meaning that they actually can be born in litters with standard siblings. In fact, you can have two parent standards who carry dwarfism, and 25% of the litter will be dwarfs, while 75% will be standards. And similarly, if one parent is a carrier and one is a dwarf, then 50% of the litter will be dwarfs and 50% will be standards. Uh, if both parents are dwarfs, then 100% of the litter will be dwarfs. Uh, and if both parents are standards and don't carry dwarfism, then you're not going to see any dwarfism. Uh, technically, it could randomly mutate, but the chance of that is very low. So dwarf rats were first actually found in labs, and then they made their way into the pet population. Uh, and as a result, they're still fairly new to the pet world. That is to say, they're like 10 or 20 years into the pet world. Uh, they're not super, super new, but as far as being readily available, in the last few years, I've definitely seen the amount of dwarfs out there and the amount of breeders offering dwarfs really skyrocket. So it's definitely a variety that's just becoming more popular and as a result is becoming more readily available with time. Now, one of the big questions people always have about dwarfs is, do they have any sorts of health issues that standards don't? Because with a lot of dwarf animals, you will find that they have like malocclusion or spine issues or a variety of other issues. And with dwarf rats, they don't have those issues. They're actually typically healthier than standard rats because they lack a lot of growth hormone. And as a result, they don't typically develop hormonal-based tumors. So things like mammary tumors and pituitary gland tumors are extremely rare in dwarfs. Uh, they can occasionally occur. I think this is very important to remember because there is about a 5% chance of finding mammary tumors in dwarf rats. Uh, regardless of sex, but that's a lot better than standard rats where with intact females in particular, you typically find between a 50 to 70% chance of them developing tumors after they reach a year and a half of age. Whereas with both dwarf females and males, they only typically develop mammary tumors about 5% of the time. So there are some health benefits to having dwarfs because, well, tumors are very common in older rats, both males and females, but especially intact females. And so it's nice that dwarfs resist certain types of tumors without needing any sort of surgery like an early spay which would help prevent hormonal-based tumors in standard female rats. Now, as a result of them being less tumor-prone, dwarfs also live on average 38% longer than standard rats. Of course, since this is an average, they won't always live longer than standards. You might have a super long-lived standard or just a super short-lived dwarf. You know, things can happen, unfortunately. But on average, they do live quite a bit longer than standard rats, and that is definitely a big benefit, especially because rats are such short-lived pets. Now, as far as care goes, dwarf rats need the exact same care as any other rat, uh, including standard rats. The main care difference with dwarfs as opposed to standards is just what bar spacing they need. Dwarfs always need bar spacing of one half inch or less on their cages, whereas with standard rats, often after a few months of age, you can put them in a cage with slightly larger bar spacing. Personally, I like to keep all my standard rats in a cage with one half inch bar spacing as well, just in case. So it hasn't really been any sort of adjustment for me because I already use a cage with one half inch bar spacing. But that being said, if you are planning to keep dwarfs, just keep in mind that they will always need a cage with small bar spacing uh, and you will never be able to upgrade them to a cage with larger bar spacing because they'll just never grow large enough not to be able to easily escape. Now, as far as diet goes, they have the exact same dietary requirements as any other rat. The only difference is, of course, that they eat a lot less than your typical standard rat because, well, they weigh a lot less. But other than that, they really have no differences in diet. And just again, in general, they really don't have any differences in care. They need to live with other rats. They need the exact same amount of space as a standard rat. Uh, even though they are smaller, they are very active. So they do still need at least two cubic feet of space per dwarf rat. 
uh, just like with standards. So again, their care is really just exactly the same as standard rats, and that makes the transition from having standard rats to dwarfs or having both at the same time quite easy. Now this is where the big question of can you house standard rats and dwarf rats together comes in. And I'm not going to get too in depth with this, but basically the answer to this is yes, you can as long as they are bonded. And what I mean by this is that the most difficult and dangerous part of any rats interacting together, including dwarfs and standards, is always going to be the introduction because this is when the rats don't know each other and as a result, they're much more likely to lash out and be aggressive towards each other. Uh, and with dwarf rats being so small, this can easily be a big problem if you're introducing them to standard adults, which can easily be three to six times their size, sometimes even larger than that. Uh, and so as a result, they can get hurt a lot easier than another standard rat. So you have to be really careful during intros, but once intros are over, then you can safely house them together because the standard rats won't treat the dwarfs any differently than any other standard rat, and the dwarfs will treat the standards just like any other dwarf. They really don't distinguish based on size. And for example, in my cage, my girl Toast, who is actually my smallest dwarf, she rules all the other rats. She regularly tips them over, including the standard rats. She regularly chases them down. She really doesn't seem to understand that she is way smaller than all my other rats and that they could easily squash her uh, and as a result they also don't seem to understand that they could easily squash her because they always listen to what she wants and they always roll over for her or let her chase them down or let her force groom them basically she rules the entire cage both dwarfs and standards alike so that just kind of gives you an example of how personality really matters the most when it comes to how the rats interact together because they really don't care about each other's size at least once they're bonded uh, it's really just down to what their personality is and that kind of dictates their position in the group. But yeah, overall, keeping dwarfs and standards together is just fine. It's especially easy if you introduce young standards to dwarfs because the young standards will be super accepting and not territorial yet. Plus, they'll be smaller because they haven't finished growing yet, and so the dwarfs will be more on par size-wise with them. And then as they grow, they'll see the dwarfs as their cage mates, and so they won't be, you know, overly aggressive or anything like that with them. They'll be just as gentle as they would with any other cage mate. Um, but you can, of course, also introduce adult standards to dwarfs, both young and old, and this is actually what I ended up doing, but it can be a little bit more difficult just because, again, because adult standards are so much larger than dwarf rats, as a result, they could potentially injure the dwarfs a lot easier, so you just have to be a lot more careful with intros and go a lot slower. But again, as long as intros go well and they finish up and the rats are all bonded, then there's no problem housing dwarfs and standards together. Anyways, that's pretty much all I wanted to say about dwarf rats. I have had mine for a little over a year now, which is pretty awesome. Uh, they are super sweet, super social, and all my dwarfs have just been really amazing. They're just as quick to pick up new tricks. They're just as smart. They're just as active. Uh, actually, they might be even more active than a lot of my standards. They're definitely more agile. Like, they can jump and climb pretty crazily, uh, and I think it's just easier for them because they're, well, pretty small compared to the standard rats. So it's just easier for them to be a little bit more agile. But overall, my experience with dwarfs so far has been really awesome. Uh, they've all been really sweet and social and I've just really loved getting to know them. They seem to be just as varied personality wise as any of my standards. And I definitely hope to have more dwarfs in the future. Although I also like my standards a lot. So I'll probably continue having a mixed group as long as that's possible. So yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to say about dwarf rats. Uh, if you guys have any experience with dwarfs that you'd like to leave in the comments and I'd love to read it. But uh, other than that, I hope to see you guys next time and I hope you have a good day. Bye.